Hello everyone, welcome back to the farm. We have a beautiful mid-April day, late afternoon, and today I'd like to talk a little bit about my friend here, the Dendrobium orchid. Dendrobium is a large group of orchids. They look like this. Many of them have this. this is it called a pseudobulb or a pseudobulb stem? It is called a pseudobulb because it is not a full bulb like in other plants. Pseudo means partially. And what the pseudobulb does is it holds water and it kind of takes the place of a stem in this kind of orchid. Now this orchid, this particular friend, thank you for being a volunteer for today's show. And this friend I recently got because it had fallen from a tree uh, in town. And when a plant like this is on the ground, it comes home to my home for abandoned plants. That's right, orphaned and abandoned plants have a home in my garden. This guy is a beautiful shape, I would say. This is a healthy individual. And let's look at what the roots are like, because there's a lot going on here. And I know sometimes people can have trouble knowing whether their orchid roots are healthy or not healthy or what's going on. So you see these white, green, fat roots, the ones that I'm mainly focusing on. Some of these roots you could see, they're like white and green, fat, plump, healthy looking. And then other ones are kind of like dull and dirty and turning brown, right? And then we have these like kind of crispy white roots, right? These are the bottom ones. If you look at the base of the plant where everything comes together in these kind of larger bulbs, right? These are really like the bulby bulbs part. And you can see where the roots join up with the bulbs and the healthiest roots are coming out of the bulbs. So you can pretty easily see which ones are healthy, which ones are not. But the thing that's important to note is that this moss that its roots are covered in, this was, it already came with it, right? It already had this when it fell from the tree. Because if you imagine how it's going to hang on the tree, it'll be kind of like this. And what the moss does is it protects it from any sun, for example, that might be overly burning to the roots. And moss creates a tiny, wet, dark, cool ecosystem under there. Moss is a little tiny plant, and around the moss is an area of cool and moisture, even when other parts of the plant in the exact same place might be dry. So it provides a bit of a, um, a way to maintain moisture around the roots, even during periods when there might not be that much rain for a couple weeks. Okay. What you can see here is a new tiny pseudobulb coming up. Very cute, adorable. Here you can see the leaves. And there are other bits that are coming out of these sections. Now, these bits are buds. And I'm not sure whether these buds are going to be um, flowers or not. They might be another plant. The next part that we're going to be talking about after having looked at these bulbs, new segments that might be coming up, is how to propagate the plant. Now, propagate means make more of. So one way you can make more of it is to split these sections. You would want to be very careful and make sure that you get every section, every one of these can become a new plant on its own as long as it has some of its own roots that are healthy and viable. So. People do try to split them. I have split orchids before with varying amounts of success. But this guy seems very happy together in its little clump. So I'm going to leave it as this. I'm going to find a tree for it and set it there. But you might be wondering, what if I just have a stick like this? What will happen? Turns out, if you place it in a shady spot on the ground, it may make a little guy made a little bud. This has no roots. Look, it hasn't put out any roots, but it's making a little guy. It's making more of itself. Let's see, is this a new segment that's growing? It certainly looks like a new segment that's growing. And this is another one that came out. So here, the thing about the pseudobulb is you can see when it's drying out and when it's uh, getting thirsty, right? It's like a camel hump. It stores water. So here you see how it's getting kind of squished together. This part is where it's starting to get a little bit thirsty. 
when they're nice and full and smooth, that's how you know they're full of water and happy. Now here's another one that recently sprouted a tiny baby. And this was a similar one to this other one where I just placed it kind of in a shadow place and it grew this. Now this is a tiny outcropping. It's connected. You can look from this side. It's connected to the main pseudo bulb, but it's growing. It's, it's like its own little tiny version of the plant. It has its own little pseudo bulb, its own little leaf, its own little node, and its own little roots. And these are alive roots. I'm going to go put this back in the shade, but you can see this tiny baby, it can come off pretty easily. You can even just like get the whole thing off with, you know, a flick of your finger. As long as you maintain some of the root, some of the bulb, and it's all connected, this little tiny bit, if separated from the main pseudobulb, it will grow. But it'll grow a lot slower because it shares energy, it gets nutrients, support, etc. from the pseudobulb. So you want to, um, if you don't need to separate them, it's kind of nice to leave them on the plants so that they get the most support that they can and grow big and healthy and strong. So thank you once again to our three dendrobium volunteers here who participated in our video. I hope you learned something more. And if you have a dendrobium friend in your life, I hope you will be able to be a better friend to it. All right. See you next time. Bye-bye.